Hey, I'm Dr. Eric Jansen, and today we're going to demonstrate a, what we call a dry bones model uh, for a total knee replacement. So this is just a model of the femur, the thigh bone, and the tibia bone down below. But when we first uh, make our incision, uh, we make a skin incision directly in the front of the knee, and then we go inside and we actually uh, rotate out the kneecap uh, to where we can get to it. And I just kind of want to, on this model, demonstrate that we'll rotate the kneecap out right here. And then what we actually do is we take off the spurs or what we call the osteophytes uh, and then make a cut where we make it flat on the patella and then put a plastic button on. So once, once we prepare the patella, we evert it out and we have a retractor that holds that out of the way and a retractor from this inner side that holds the soft tissue and we actually have good access to the knee, once again through a limited incision. Uh, we'll next use a drill to make a little pilot hole into the end of the bone right here in the femur and we'll actually drill that down into the femoral canal. And the reason we do that is, is that we have to have a guide to give us our alignment when we put that first uh, jig on. We'll go ahead and place in this alignment rod and it has a cutting block attached to it and it sets the angle for our cut. And normally we're gonna set in general a five degree cut on this uh, distal femur unless there's something that dictates that we do different. So next we'll move over to this side of the table and we actually will pin this little block into place. So we'll place that down and we'll put the second pin in to give it good stability. Then next we'll release this and pull the alignment rod off. Now if we like our distance we can actually adjust this so if, if we don't feel we're getting enough bone off or we need more bone or we want to correct the angle we can do that at this point. And once that cut is made, where we have it nice and flat and smooth, we'll then go ahead and remove our pins. We're going to use a sizing guide to figure out what size femur we want to use. So what we do is we'll put these feet down up against the, underneath the bone right here, and we'll place the block up on there, and we use this little stylus up on top of the bone to make our decision, and we'll actually read it uh, off of this area right here. So as we'll put little drill pins into this guide. And then we'll put on our cutting block next. And next we'll have to pin that in place once again to keep it good and stable. But this block will make our front back cuts and what we call our chamfer cuts. So once again, this will be two pins to stabilize this block and go ahead and make these cuts. So we'll start on the top here. Then we'll make our uh, chamfer cuts. And then we'll come up and make this top chamfer cut. Once again, next step will be to remove the pins. So after we've removed um, all the bone, and at this point, any excessive spurs that are on here will take out as well. The next thing is, is that this model doesn't demonstrate it, but there are some ligaments. This represents the posterior cruciate ligament, and the anterior cruciate ligament would come up in this direction here. So we would go ahead, if they're still present, and take those two ligaments out with this particular implant. We would leave our collateral or side ligaments, which are represented by these uh, bands right here. Uh, at that point, we would also go ahead and remove any remaining meniscal or cartilage tissue off of that area. But for the most part, at this point, we've got the femur prepared where we want. We then would bring the tibia forward and start to prepare that. Uh, next, this is just a personal preference of mine where I like to take off the tibial spines to make it flat where I can drill the next uh, drill in. But now we're working on the tibial side. And once I have a good flat surface to work with, we'll come in and actually uh, put our uh, drill in again for our rod. We'll use an intramedullary rod. And there are several different ways to do this. You can do this with an extramedullary rod, but I like using the rods that go down the bone. I think we'll get a little bit better read on the alignment that we want. So next the rod will be placed down the tibia. We want to determine how far down the tibia we're going to make the cut. Usually all we're trying to do with these implants is, uh, when we make our cuts, is to make enough cut on the bone to get the uh, implant in to the level that we want. When we get to so that height, we want to lock that in. And then we'll go ahead and place our pins again.
usually we're doing a pretty flat cut here with just a little bit of slope to the back. So the block will come back off. Go ahead and remove our pins out. So next uh, similar thing, we want to measure the size of this. We have multiple sizes to mix and match so we get the perfect fit on the patient. The next step will be to pin this in place. So next we have a little uh, tower that goes onto this and we'll put this in place. Then we'll go down to the depth of the uh, uh, indication on this reamer here to make our hole for our stem that goes on this particular component. And then there's a punch with these fins that matches up to what we'll put in for our final implant. So once we prepare the tibia, uh, we'll go ahead and remove this handle off of here. And we'll go back and turn our attention back to the femur now. We'll put our femur into place. Next to finish the groove for where the patella will ride in the implant, we'll make a little cut along here. And to finish this so we can trial it, we'll go ahead and put this plastic piece on to the trial. So now the femur is completely prepared, and now we have to determine what the size of our uh, polyethylene component, the piece that will fit between the two metal components will be. So we'll go ahead and snap this into place, and then we have our trial implant on. So we'll drop the kneecap back into place, take our retractors out, and we'll actually put this knee through a range of motion, make sure that we can get it fully straight, uh, fully bent back down. Uh, we want to check the stability of the knee, make sure that it's all stable and within the constraints of the ligament. And we have the ability to pop this component out and go with a thicker piece. And so once we figure that out, we now know what the size of our femoral component is, our tibial component, the polyethylene that goes in between, and our plastic button for the patella. So at this stage, we'll go ahead and remove all the trials out. Uh, we'll open up the final implants. We'll wash off the bony surfaces real well and then we'll cement those components on. The cement takes maybe about five minutes to harden and then we're basically finished uh, and we'll close up the wound at that point. Uh, essentially, this operation takes us about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So that's basically how the total knee replacement is done with the dry bones model. For more information on this and other procedures, go to www.sportsmedalabama.com.